Welcome back to CGIU Stories 2011. I'm here with Ellen Gustafson, who I'm so delighted to be sitting next to. Um, this year, we've been focusing on sort of the paradox of global hunger and sort of obesity and overconsumption. First of all, I want to talk about how you got involved um, in this in this issue to begin with, and, and maybe we can start by talking about the Feed Project. Yeah, well, actually, it, it's even before then. I started off my career working in security issues and noticed uh, at some point about six years ago that the map of places in the world where people are, are, are fighting and, and have security problems are actually the same places where people are food insecure and are hungry. Mm -hmm. So I started working at the UN World Food Program and then eventually met my mm -hmm. feed business partner and we, we co-founded a company and a nonprofit to raise money and awareness uh, for hunger issues and specifically school feeding, which is really an incredible solution to hunger. But after four and a half years of working, uh, you know, raising money for, for anti-hunger programs and, and raising awareness about this really incredible issue, I started to notice that there was a billion people in the world that were hungry and there's also a billion people in the world that were overweight. And it seemed like it couldn't possibly just be a, real, a sad irony. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some inter, interconnection between the two. And, and I also really thought about the fact that, you know, four and a half years, uh, you know, working at Feed and, and after a year working at the World Food Program, the numbers of the hungry were actually still rising. So maybe there's a better way out there that we can be addressing this problem that can be moving towards an end to hunger and not just feeling like, you know, we're continually focused on trying to find ways to feed the hungry today. Um, so, so that's really where it all came from. And so what is the answer and what is the 30 Project? Tell us. Well, really, you know, I think part of the problem is that we don't actually have a unified answer. And that's what the 30 Project is looking to address. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really looking at the last 30 years and saying, hey, in the last 30 years, the obesity epidemic is, is absolutely skyrocketed, but hunger has also gone up too. Mm -hmm. Even in the United States, there's over 49 million hungry people um, living, living just here in our own country. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm actually trying to say, listen, let's take the time right now and let's gather all the incredible organizations that are doing work to address these problems today and think about what is the vision for a better food system 30 years out. Because if it's taken us 30 years to get to where we are today, in another 30 years, maybe we can have the kind of really dramatic, you know, progressive and, and revolutionary change that will make a healthier food system for people so there won't be a billion people hungry or a billion people overweight. Interesting. Uh, what are some of the organizations that are involved? You know, I'm really casting a very wide net. I think organizations like the World Food Program, Feeding People Internationally, have obviously a vested interest in finding ways to end hunger over the long term. And then American organizations like Share Our Strength, which are addressing childhood hunger today in our own country, also have actually the same, in some ways, the same goals over the long term. But then on the other side, you know, organizations like Slow Food that are looking to create a healthier food system and, and, and even our, our National Family Farmers Coalition that are working on farmers issues, all of those different organizations are really looking at very similar problems. How do we find ways for people, no matter where they live in the world, to access nutritious foods? And so I think that, that you know, we've got the willpower, we've got the, the intelligent people and the energy and the, and the great organizations doing the work. And all I'm trying to say is let's, let's think of a long-term vision and, and a plan and a way to get there. It's certainly something that's incredibly necessary. I'm, I'm curious to know if you see any sort of role for the corporate sector as well. Absolutely. You know, I, I think many people, it's, it's easy to say, oh, it's companies and they're not offering us healthy food, but that's definitely not that, you know, that's not the whole issue. You know, there, there's so many complex problems when it comes to how people deliver food and, and how we, you know, look, packaged food was created to fill a need because we need right. food to be shelf stable over a long period of time. The other side is that if people and consumers are not demanding healthier food choices, companies certainly don't have the incentive to make them. So I think there's an incredible role for, for, for the corporate sector to, to be leaders, but also to really listen to what consumers say. The other part of the 30 project that I'm working very hard to do is to, to gather people around the table, consumers, to, to just say, listen, have dinner and talk about the food. It's not about railing you know, on, 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 on big companies or, or anything like that. It's really about saying, what is on our table and how can we make it better and how can we as consumers ask for better food that will help feed not only ourselves but people all around the world. That's great. I know that you spoke on a panel today which was sort of about this exact topic about the paradox of uh, undernutrition or hunger and, and overconsumption. How was that <laughs> and how was the conversation? It, it was incredible. It was amazing. I, I, Raj Patel actually who was a panel on the panel with me Actually, his book was one of the inspirations for the 30 Project oh, over really? a year ago. Yeah, yeah. You know that. Okay. yeah, so I had read Stuffed and Starved while I was on a plane, uh -huh. and I was actually preparing for my own 30th birthday, and I was like, 
oh, weird, he keeps mentioning 1980 in this book about, you know, as, as a time where a lot of these problems started to develop. And I was like, huh, I was born in 1980. That's really funny. The food system and me are about the same age. I'm the um, 1980 baby. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> so it was really this, the 30, that's where the 30 Project kind of idea came up. It was uh-huh. like, hey, if, if I've been on the planet long enough for, for this obesity trajectory to go out of control and for the numbers of the hungry to rise as well. Interesting. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it seems like a long period of time. It's not really that long of a period of time. Let, let's look at 30 year change. Mm-hmm. And then the other side was, is, is a student who actually, you know, out of CGI created this organization that's providing acutely malnourished children with nutrition mm-hmm. today, Mark Arnoldi. Mark Arnoldi. The reality is that's, it's preci- that, that really encapsulates what's going on in the world. We need mm-hmm. people to feed the hungry today, absolutely. And we need great organizations like his, but also the big food aid organizations to be doing that. But I just argue that, look, 30 years out, we don't want these organizations to be around anymore. You know, we, we, we want to have solved some of these problems and really address the underlying causes that, that are creating these symptoms. What can folks in our audience and sort of the average consumer do to either be part of the 30 Project or somehow start kind of reimagining these food systems in more in healthier ways? You know, my, my call to action is really simple. It's, it's gather people around the table and have a conversation solely about the food. And it's preparing food that you know, you know where it comes from. You know, you've met the farmer, but also you've bought it from your grocery store and you understand what companies are behind a lot of the, the food that's, that we're serving to each other. We're developing a, a, 30, a good guide with Good Magazine to, to have a, a 30 project That's dinner great. and really sort of a set of questions, almost actually like a, like a Seder, like a, a you know, uh-huh. um, and the idea is just to say, hey, listen, let's, let's sit around the table and talk about food itself in our own community, in our own region. You know, what are the main problems? Are, are there hungry people in our own community? Of course there are, you know, but people don't usually think about that when they're sitting around the table. How are we addressing obesity in our own school at the local level? And right. then even, you know, to college students, how is our how is our campus food system structured? I mean, even here at UCSD, you know, downstairs right right below us right now is is a Burger King. That's okay, but are there also other options for people who want to eat more nutritious foods? Um, so I think there's a, a really interesting opportunity for people to just at a very in a very simple at a very local way gather around the table and have dinner and talk about food. I love that. And I love that you clearly love food. You talk about food like you love it and you savor it. And I think that kind of appreciation of food is necessary in the conversation. Absolutely. I mean, I think we we sometimes lose that when we talk Mm -hmm. about hunger and and even things like anorexia um, that exist in, in in our community as well. You know, we forget about the idea that, that food takes time and we're meant to savor it and it's supposed to be really delicious. It's funny actually, the other restaurant that's right below us is a Greek restaurant and, uh, and tzatziki, which is like a Greek dip, is my favorite food. And it's just one of those things that people, you know, are like, you, you, don't, you don't realize that people that are food activists actually probably love to eat too. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. And, and how can people learn more? What website can they go to? They can go to 30project30project.org. And okay. uh, yeah, thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you.